Terry Greenwald, I'm coming from Eagle's Nest Ministries, and we have this weekly presentation where we share what we feel is on God's heart. <clears throat> and our ministry is prophetic, so we want to just share what we feel prophetically God is doing. Yes. And we read some of the prophets' prophecies that have come this last week. And uh, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about the Tabernacle of David and how God is about to give the church an open heaven, how God is about to let the Holy Spirit flow out where there's going to be a revival, there's going to be mass salvations, there's going to be a, a ministry of His glory, and the, the Christians are going to start being empowered to yes. do the supernatural. Yes. And this is going to just get you fired up because yes. God says in the last days, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which is broken down. And if you understand about the tabernacle of David, in David's day, the Holy Spirit would flow out of that tabernacle. They would have the priests there. There would be the the ministry and the minstrels and the players with harps and lyres. And I mean, there would be such ministry to the Lord that God would yeah. come down and his glory would flow out of that tabernacle. But the tabernacle got broken down. But in the book of Acts, it tells us that in the last days, God is going to rebuild the tabernacle of David that is broken down. And he's going to pour out the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, our best days are still ahead of us. Yes. Yes. And we, we don't want to get fatalistic and say, oh, there's a virus now and the yeah. whole world is going to go into great cataclysmic lack of finances and bankruptcies and nations that fall apart. No, this is the atmosphere that God prophesied would come before the outpouring of His Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I just want to share about this tonight. I call this the Tabernacle of David and living under an open heaven. Now we know in the, in the Bible it tells us that there were times where Jesus would go into a place like Capernaum and the heavens would be open, the miracles would happen, people were supernaturally drawn to him, the crowds came, the healings happened, and he was you know, opening the blind eyes and raising yes. the dead. I mean, that's what Amen. was happening in Capernaum. Yes. But then in Nazareth, he had an, a closed heaven because they got too familiar with him. It's not this, the, the son of... of the, the carpenter's son. I mean, this is a nobody. Who is this? And because of that, the Bible says he could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. So I just wanted to encourage you because in the days of King David, let's go back and look at the original tabernacle of David. He established a tabernacle that had priestly singers and musicians. They ministered to the Lord night and day. It was a place of 24-hour worship, praise, prayer, and prophetic declarations. Mm, yes. You know, somebody, uh, one of my buddies, my friends, his name is Mike Bickle. Mike Bickle, in May of 1983, he had the Kansas City Fellowship, and he, had, he received a prophetic word that God wanted to release a 24-hour-a-day prayer and worship mm. uh, center. It was be a place in the spirit like the Tabernacle of David. And Mike Bickle, he, he's, he realized that he needed to involve the prophetic and prophetic singers and musicians, and they would all be ministering to the Lord, declaring His works in the earth. And they named this movement the Harp and Bowl, the Harp and Bowl movement, mixing praise and worship with prayers and declarations. I'm telling you, God wow. is going to relaunch this yes. Harp and Bowl, this yes. Tabernacle of David, because Mike Bickle had incredible response. I mean, his ministry exploded. The power of God was manifested. I would go to some of his conferences and the prophets were prophesying the most specific and accurate words. People were being healed. 
And this is something that God wants to, yes. I, I, I'm sure that he still has this going on, oh, yes. but God wants it in other places. Yes. Yes. So since God inhabits our praises, he inhabits our praises, the tabernacle of David is what we see in Acts 15, verse 16. And it says in verses 14 and 15, he's rebuilding it in these last days, and it will, it will have us as sanctified priesthood. We'll be a sanctified priesthood. We'll be praising God, prophesying, and praying to bring in his glory. Now, yeah. most Christians say we believe that, that God's going to pour out his glory in these last days. It's been prophesied all through the word. But maybe we need to look at the fact that this is one of the ways that the glory gets released. And I, I believe there will be healings and miracles. Yes. Acts of God will be oh, manifesting. Yes. Uh, yes. If you read in Acts 15, verse 14 through 16, it tells us about this. And it's imperative that the key to God's glory is intimacy with yes. God. Yes. Yes. The key to God's glory yes. is intimacy with God. Yes. It's praying without ceasing. Amen. We could say it's continual fellowship and communion with God in our daily endeavors where he's constantly on our hearts and minds and we're sharing our waking moments with him and praying in the spirit. Uh, you know, I, I was looking the other day at the fact that there's a revelation in Ecclesiastes about uh, the treasury of, of uh, snow. snow, that God says that he's going to open up the treasury of snow. And I would like to just, <clears throat> maybe I should read some of that to you because this yes. is uh, in Job. Here's what he says. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail? Now, snow and hail are the water which is frozen and it's stored up. And it says, which I have reserved, verse 23 of Job 38, which I have reserved, this hail and this uh, snow have been reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war. Now, we're in a time of trouble right now. Yes, we are, Dr. Gary. And we're in war because yes. we see nations that yes. are rising up and continually trying yes. to uh, take out America. Yes. yes. But the Christians need to understand that when we pray in the Spirit, Come it's on. like you building up water. Yes. yes. The Holy Spirit flows like water. That's right. And God stores it like snow and hail. Mm, that's good. And God says <clears throat> in other scriptures that when he wants to use this for his kingdom, he melts it. Let, let's look at Amos 9, verse 11 through 14. It, 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 they, basically, in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David. Well, this is really talking about the tabernacle of David. But there's other scriptures that I wanted to look at in Psalms 147, 15 through 18. He sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. So God, when he speaks on the earth, his commandment begins to, to run like water. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word. Now, here's what happens. Mm -hmm. He sendeth out his word, and he melteth them. This is the ice and the snow yes. and the hail. He melteth them. He causes the winds to blow. That's the Holy Spirit. And the waters begin to flow. Wow. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, let me just sum it up. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, Every prayer is stored up like hail yes. and like ice. Yes. And God says that it builds up in your life and it's ready to flow out. 
out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water, but he stores it up like ice and snow. And then when you get in the right atmosphere mm -hmm. and there's a spirit of praise and the prophetic yes. and this tabernacle of David, it starts melting that ice that's built up in your life and it begins to cause miracles and healings and everybody around you starts getting touched. Yes. And evangelism is so easy because mm -hmm. people get around you and they feel convicted of their that's sins. Right. Yes. That's what happened with Jesus. He could not walk into an atmosphere without the power of God uh, manifesting. And, and what was his secret? He would go up in the mountains. Yes. He would pray all night. And then he'd come and the miracles would flow. Yes. So I'm just telling you, this is something that God is about to do. He's going to rebuild. The Bible says he's going to rebuild in the book of Acts, the tabernacle of David that is broken down. And we're going to live a life where we... Seek him daily. Yes. We're going to walk around praying in the spirit more than we've ever yes. prayed before because yes. he wants intimacy. Yes. yes. When we pray in the spirit, we're going to build up this snow and hail. Right. And then when we get in the right atmosphere where there's the prophetic and there's warfare and there's praises, mm -hmm. it's going to start melting this snow. Wow. And we're going to see large numbers of people coming to the Lord. Nations mm -hmm. are going to have revival. Yes. It's yeah, all yeah. being prepared. Yes. You know, if, if you've ever fallen deeply in love with someone, you know that you constantly think about that person, you fellowship with that person. You know, we need to fall in love with Jesus yes. again. Yes. yes. We need to walk around during the day and say, Lord, I want to take communion and have yes. fellowship. Yes. Communion is intimacy with the Lord. Yes. And he wants to see who really wants to seek his face. Right. And when you have that fellowship with him, every time you pray in the spirit, you're building up this treasury of snow and ice. Yes. Yes. And God says, I'm, I'm storing it for you yes. because the day is going to come when the praise and worship mm -hmm. and the prophetic is going to begin to melt it and the power of God is going to flow out of you. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. That's the snow melting. <laughs> Apostle, you know, no wonder I see so much water. So when we go to different nations and I see actual water come in and then it rises as we begin to minister. And then when you said about the snow and the water, um, the voice, one time I saw a waterfall, Apostle, while you were ministering. It was like a big waterfall. And then I found in Psalms 28, the voice of God is like many waters. Mm -hmm. And so this is really wonderful. And the, this is when the Lord is pleased. Then when he's not, if flesh comes in right in the middle of a, of a miraculous time, I've actually witnessed this one time. I went to a crusade, not apostles, it was somebody else's. And it was awesome. And I saw the waters come in like ocean waves. And it was splashing on the, uh, the person that was hosting. And then a person got up there and got in the flesh. And I saw the waters recede. And then when the other person took back the service and, and uh, just obeyed God and, and ministering in the miracles and signs and wonders and prophetic words, then I saw the waters come back in. And I told that person, he goes, that's exactly right, because he's a seer also. So we just praise him. And uh, Apostle, right now with all your leadership, we are falling in love with Jesus all over again. We can't get together enough to pray. You know, for many, many things. Well, we're having nightly prayer. Yes, we are. And all of our intercessors are joining on, what is that, a line that we it's, have? It's a conference <laughs> call that's been set up. And uh, we just call and we begin to all pray and take turns. And the presence of God comes. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, I, I was at a conference uh, that Mike Bickle had after he started this uh, Harp and Bowl. And I mean, I received some of the most life-changing mm. prophetic words. Yes. It, it, it was like uh, the prophets were giving me direction and even telling me about the next chapter in my life. Wow. So we are not flowing right. under an open heaven like we can be. Right, right. And if we will begin to love the Lord, you know, you're, yes. you're only on the earth for this short amount of time called a life. Yes. And if you don't live that for him... You know, we're going to live for eternity anyway, 
But if you're going to live your life, let's live it poured out for him. Because too many Christians have this attitude that when I get a good job and I have enough income and I get all my needs met and a home built and every, I'm, then I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm yes. going to seek the yes. Lord. No, 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 no. You're <laughs> going to seek the Lord. Jesus yes. had no place to lay his head. He wasn't looking for a home. Right. He was looking to be in fellowship right. and relationship with the Father. Amen. Yes. And yes. because he would go up in the hills and pray all night and show God that he loved him more than life itself, right. he would come. The wow. Bible says he'd return in the power of the yes. Holy right. Spirit. Right. And miracles yes. would happen. Yes. Well, right, that moves right. me. Multitudes right now. would well, come out. Yes. We're about to see the glory Amen. of the Lord cover the earth. Amen. Right. It's going to flow out of us. Those yes. are two major keys, Apostle Gary. Uh, praying in the Spirit and intimacy. Uh, I used to love what Kim would say. Kim used to say, intimacy, intimacy, into me, see. You see. So that was nothing, you know, that he was trying to hide from God. Nothing at all. He was just coming before him. And as he mentioned many times in prayer, you know, his time in prayer, just praying in the spirit and just spending time with the Lord, that I believe is the key to what we're about to uh, see, all that we're desiring to see take place. You know, know, let me tell you about Kim Clement. Uh, He was best friends with Greg Work, who was one of my pastors. Right. And they would go and play tennis. But Greg would tell me that, Kim, in the mornings, would just spend hours and yes, hours yes, praying yes. in the Spirit yes. and seeking God's face. Yes. Especially yes. if he had a meeting that night, he wanted to have the mind of Christ right. yes. and give the most accurate words. Right. And he just loved being in the presence of God. And I would say his words were some of the most life-changing. Oh. Oh, I mean, yes. he oh, gave yes. me some words. Yes. Uh, uh, they... I mean, they're so grandiose that uh, I don't even want to tell you what he said. But, I mean, uh, they encouraged me that God had a place for me for the last days. Yes, Yes. amen. And Kim, he was actually received everywhere. He was, I mean, I look back and his words were so accurate now that we're seeing them fulfilled. But he would spend this quality time with God. Then we heard that, uh, in his latter days, he would go out in his garden, yes. Yes. and his wife and others would tell about him just going into the garden yes. to pray all day, yes. but he would return. That's what Jesus did. He returned in yes. the power of the Holy yes. Spirit. Right. Yes. He would right. go into the wilderness to pray. That's right. He would go up into the mountains and pray, yes. but he would return in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So I want to encourage you. We need to build up this treasury of snow and hail, yes. which is frozen prayers yes. and prophecies. Yes. It, it, every time you go into this intimacy with the Lord, you have this treasury of the hail and the snow. And then when you begin to minister, God sends the wind of his spirit. It melts it, yes. and God's glory begins yes. to flow. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, Apostle, um, many people will call or they'll come up to us for prayer. In a, in a service at, after the prayer, and they will say, I don't feel God. How is it that you hear him? And I said, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit quickened me and said in James 4, 8, if you draw near to him, draw near to God, Father God, he will draw near to you. Pursue him. And he also says in Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13, if you search for him with all of your heart, that he will be found by you. So search for him, pursue him, spend time with him. Like Prophet uh, Amos, I was going to say, Prophet Amos, <laughs> he's always in the word, by the way. He lives in the word. He's a deep well. And Apostle Gary, you are always talking what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. And you're always talking about walking around your house and praying and worshiping. And I do that too. The beach is my favorite. When I hear that water, boy, I can hear his voice so clear. Well, I I encourage you to go on prayer walks. Yes. Yes. Get out in your neighborhood. You need the health anyway. (laughs) Just walk down the street, go out to some park, and just walk with the Lord. Because he's looking. He made you to fulfill what Adam did not fulfill. That's right. He Mm -hmm. wanted to have fellowship with Adam and walked with him every day. Yes. And gave him dominion because Adam fellowshiped with him. 
And if you're going to have dominion, you've got to become like Adam. Yeah. Jesus is called the last Adam. Mm -hmm. And what would he do? He would go up in the mountains to pray. Right. He would go out and fast for yes. 40 days. And, yes. and just he would return in the power yes. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the key. Ooh. And God wants you to build that treasury of snow. Yes. And then when you come back and you want to begin to manifest his glory... He'll blow on that snow mm -hmm. and it'll begin Amen. to melt Amen. and everybody will begin to drink of the yeah. living water. Yeah. And you know what, Apostle? You got me really stirred up. Some people are night people because it's quiet at night. Then pursue him at night. Uh, many people hear him in their dreams. So ask the Lord to speak to you and to visit you in your dreams and visions. Uh, matter of fact, that's what brought me here. And that's what, you know, I received many things from the Lord, even healing, direction, um, he, warnings, many, many things. He always directs me back into the word. And, you know, he just reminded me of something that he showed me in a dream in December, and I'm going to bring it to today. Um, I read it to Janet, and there was a warning about um, that there was a lot of loss in our nation um, there was a lot of fear and anxiety. And then there was a scripture that I got. It's right here in my dream, Isaiah 10, 27. And I thought, wow. And then there were other things that were written there. I just found this today. There was a reason for that because of this coronavirus. But it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. So if you spend time with God, he will speak to you, whether you're awake or you're asleep, you're walking with him, you're riding your bike, you're driving, whatever it is that you do for your alone time, spend with him, he will speak to you. And then in, also in that dream, there was about the wind also from the north and the south and how God was going to blow. And I thought, wow, now that's interesting because that happened again just recently, how God by his breath is going to blow that COVID-19, don't, don't be paralyzed anymore. And you know that this whole, the whole world with this pandemic became panicked. So that's why, you know, there's witchcraft at work, but don't worry because he, God is in control. He sees everything. Yeah. He knows everything. There's set times under the heaven. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's never <clears throat> too late. Be encouraged today. Yes. You know, in the Song of Solomon, God likens his bride to a lover. And mm, Jesus right. is the bridegroom and right. we are the the bride. Right. Yes. And he's preparing a bride and you need to be honest with him. If you don't have that kind of love for him, just go to him and say, Lord, I'm gonna pray in the spirit and believe that you're gonna put in my heart this love so that I fulfill what Adam failed to fulfill. God needed, he had a love need when yes. he created yes. Adam. Yes. And he wanted to walk with him every day and fellowship with him. Yes. And he gave him dominion and he's gonna give us back that dominion yes. because Jesus is the last yes. Adam. Yes. And he said, everything that the first Adam lost, I've come to restore right. and I'm gonna give that Adamic authority to my church. Right. But it's got to be a love relationship yes. that releases it. it you know, been. if you, any of you have ever fallen deeply in love, you know that you constantly think about that person. You want to fellowship with that person. You want to show them love yes. as much as possible. And we can talk for hours when we're so with true. somebody we love, so true. right? Yes. We can stay up all night because we love them. <laughs> That's what Jesus yes. showed us with the Father. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> That's what God desires from us. David had that relationship with God, and the Psalms are full of his love declarations. He just wrote about his love for the Lord. And what did God give David? He gave him dominion. He gave him uh, rule over all of Jerusalem yes. and yes. all of the world. I mean, yes. David was the most anointed. Uh, you know, what, yeah. what in, we have this incredible potential to have the dominion that David had, but we don't have to fall like he did. <laughs> in Song of, so Song of Songs, in chapter one, verse two, we see that Solomon started out with this relationship with God. He's, in Song of Songs, one, verse two, 
it declares, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For his love, speaking of God's love for us, is better than wine. We can literally become drunk in his presence yes. and his love for us. Yes. I know when I walk through my house praying in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I get drunk. Yes. And I actually, it's like, I, it's like, it's very intoxicating. It's, yes. I don't need drugs because I can be <laughs> high on the Lord. And here in Song of Songs, the Shunammite woman represents the bride of Christ. That's us. That's yes. believers who are deeply in love with Jesus. Yes. And verse 4, she says to her Lord, along with other believers, draw me away. We will run after you. If you draw me by the Holy Spirit, yes. I will run after you. We will run after you. The king has brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in you, king. We will remember your love more than wine. It's no wonder they love you. Yes. I mean, this is the relationship that God is looking. Yes. And he wants you to pray in the spirit. Walk around your house. Yes. Go on a prayer walk through the neighborhood. Yes. Yes. You need the exercise. Yes. <laughs> and just love on the Lord. Amen. Yes. And I tell you, he's going to begin to prophetically speak yes. through you. Oh, yes. He's going to start yes. manifesting miracles yes. through you. Yes. There's no limit. We're going to have a damic Adamic authority. Yes. Jesus yes. came to restore that authority. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, I, I believe, Dr. Kerr. I know for myself, when I'm praying in the Spirit, I mean, I just get God thoughts. I yes. mean, the thoughts just began to just flood, just flood within me. And to encourage those that may say, well, I don't hear him. The Scripture says differently. The Scripture says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. The thing about it is to capture, to recognize, to discern, to capture that voice. And I believe that comes with praying in the spirit and time of intimacy with the Lord. I, I believe that's the key. That's good, Prophet. That's and intimacy doesn't mean a crowd. So if you're not feeling close or intimate with the Lord, you need to get away and be alone with him in a special place, in a secret place of your prayer closet or like what I said before, whatever you enjoy doing, go do it, but with the Lord. Meet him at a special I think, place. I think Kim Clement used to say intimacy is God saying, uh, is you saying to the Lord, into me see. Yes. I want you to see me, yes. look into me and show me if there be wicked ways or right. wrong motivations, right. but then cleanse me by your blood by your holy spirit right. and bring out of me the glory that you have right. you you brought me into your kingdom and i'm going to live in heaven with you right. forever right. please into me see be yes. an intimate with me right. and even charlie champ somebody gave me this prophecy he's one of the great prophets today yeah. and he says watch for hail and snow that what we're talking about that's going to it's going to fall in unusual places in the coming months it will be a sign of the restoration of the economy. For the Lord would say, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Amen. God is about to Amen. pour out his glory. Yes. He's going to pour out Amen. his yes. word. It's going to yes. become his glory. Yes. And I want to yes. just pray for you right now as yes. we close. Yes. Father, I, I know there are people yes, watching right now that the enemy is condemning them yes. and telling them how unworthy they they are, yes. how they could never be part of the bride of Christ, that they are just, they've messed up, mm -hmm. they've failed, mm -hmm. they've come short of the glory of God. Lord, that is a lie. You have called them yes. to walk with you. Yes. The minute they begin to walk with you and just get on a prayer walk mm -hmm. of love yes. and tell you how much they love you and, and yes. need you, they're they're going to see that all their sins will be washed yes, away. Yes. Jesus washed away every yes. sin. And he gave us uh, access to the yes. presence of God. Yes. I just thank you, Lord, that yes, Lord. you're going to begin to confirm to them yes. that yes. you held 
nothing against them. Yeah. The enemy says God's got all these things against you. No, the blood of Jesus has cleansed you from all unrighteousness. Yes. God looks at you and he cannot yeah. see any imperfections. He yeah. sees only what Jesus did. Yeah. And I decree to you yes. that if you'll walk with God, there's going to come a new prophetic anointing on yes. your life. Yes. There's yes. going to come a new di d yes. dimension of God's presence. Yes. And people getting around you are yes. going to sense the presence of God. Yes. Get ready. This is your finest hour Amen. and God Amen. is calling you Amen. to be his bride Amen. to be his bride Amen. in Jesus name Jesus Amen. name Amen. Amen. So. Apostle so okay so I, I believe we need to give people an opportunity to be a blessing well uh, let me see if I have any notes here for the offering because you know I, I've been not giving offering calls lately and I think it, it's time that I do give an offering call. <laughs> while you're doing that, I just wanted to say that what, while Apostle Gary was speaking and praying for you, I was seen in the spirit where the enemy has been grabbing you by the eyes and the ears where you cannot hear him. So if you can't hear him and you're being harassed, there's no intimacy. So we take authority over the enemy and all witchcraft, all levels of witchcraft in Jesus name would destroy it. By the anointing is destroyed in Jesus name. So Father, I just thank you that you're opening the eyes of your children. You're opening the ears that were stopped up. Father, I pray that they would be able to hear your voice and they will be drawn to your word to read love letters in there, to read instructions, direction, dream. Father God, that they would connect, have encounters with you, have a visitation. I'm always crying for that, for a fresh visitation of your glory, of your presence, Father God. And, uh, oh, I'm seeing another thing. If you've not anointed your homes with the blood of Yeshua, of Jesus, Yeshua is in Hebrew. If you have not done that, do that. Dedicate your homes to God and the, the top and the sides of your door, just like it says in Exodus 12, uh, 12 and 13. And that angel of death will pass by even during this this time of COVID-19. So you, no need to fear. It's, it's, it's time to get near to your father at this time. Okay, yes, Apostle, sir. did you find your notes? Yeah, I, okay. I would like to just say a couple of things because I haven't been taking offerings in these broadcasts and we of course have to, we don't have our church services, so we don't have offerings coming in, but I believe the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Uh, there's the principle of the Old Testament was that they were to bring first fruits to God. And first fruits, the principle is that the first and the best of all that we have belongs to the Lord. Yes, right. And yet the church today, it's almost like when I have my needs met, when I've got a good job, when all my bills are paid, then I'm going to give God something. Right. But right. God says first fruits have to come out of your income right. before you have. God says, if you give me your best, I will give you my best. Yes. Right. And this is a principle. Ed Cole once said, you know, Ed Cole was this powerful minister yes. oh, in yes. the early days of yes. Eagle's Nest and came, came to our church. He had a maximum manhood ministry. Yes. And he said that he, uh, a pastor from uh, Hollywood called him and wanted his counsel one day. It seems that a young lady, a friend of this evangelist that had called Ed Cole, uh, this young lady lived in Hollywood and told this evangelist, that she loved God and would eventually give herself completely to the work of the kingdom. But she told the evangelist who was telling this to Ed Cole that she would give herself totally to Hollywood and her career till she was successful. Then she would give herself to God. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to put my life yes. first. Yeah. I want my career. Mm -hmm. I want my income. Yes. I want you to take care of all my needs and then I'll give you what's left over God. Well, the question was, is that young lady giving God her first fruits or her best? The answer is no. She's yeah. giving him leftovers. Yes. And this is what I see in a lot of Christians today. It's like, God, I'll give you the leftovers. If you take care of my needs, I'll give you something. Mm. The evangelist told Ed Cole he believed that he should forsake any success the world might offer him and he wanted to use his talents, his music, his best for the Savior and the King. He said, I want to just give first 
everything I have for the King Jesus, then isn't that what the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of right. God right. and his righteousness, first. and then Amen. all these yeah. other things will be added unto you. Right. So in Exodus and Leviticus, uh, animals had to be without spot or blemish. They couldn't, uh, you know, they couldn't be lame. Right. They couldn't have any blemish. Uh, they couldn't be sickly. And God's prophets indicted his people for giving him their leftovers. God was angry yes. when they gave him their leftovers. And when you give God a little income after all your bills are taken care of, that's giving leftovers to God. Yes. And this is something that God does not appreciate. I, I'm just telling you today that render unto God what is God's. That's right. And the attitude of so many church people is someday when I'm caught up on all the bills, I'll give tithes and good offerings to God. But I'm telling you, if I'm going to be honest, that stinks. Yes. That is a stinking, yes. that's stinking thinking. Yes. <laughs> I want to pray it. for you. Yes. Father, I pray that yes. anyone yes. watching today would yes. get out of this attitude. Yes. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom right. of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Put God first. It's called first fruits. Right. And then all these other things. God promises that he'll take care of your needs. That's right. He'll provide for your health. That's right. He'll take all the demonic attacks against you yeah. and he'll push yes. them away. Yes. He'll put angels yes. in charge of you. Yes. I mean, tithes are the tax of heaven. Yes. And if you're not giving God your tithes, you're not paid up. And many times, if you don't pay for the governments, they, the armies are not fighting for you. Get ready. God's got about to pour yeah. out Holy Spirit yes. blessing on yes. you. Put angels in charge of you yes. to yes. keep you in all your ways. You won't even dash your foot against a stone. I just Amen. decree God's yes. blessing on your life. Yes. His blessing is going to chase you yes. and overtake you yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Jesus name. So you can see right there in Eagle's Nest Facebook, uh, there is a place there where it has our address. So you would have your checks payable to Eagle's Nest Ministries, P.O. Box 15044, uh, Santa Ana, California. So uh, again, that's Eagle's Nest Ministries, P.O. Box 15044, uh, Santa Ana, California. We just bless you. We yes. speak multiplication over you and your finances in every area of your life. Be blessed. Yes, Amen. Yes, we love you. Yes, God bless you. Yes. And uh, Is there any words that you're getting today, Prophet you know, Amos? I'm, I'm just getting simple words right now, Pastor yeah. Gary. I'm getting basically two words right now that just keep coming back. One word is compassion. Mm. The next word I'm getting is restoration. Amen. And I'm asking the Lord, I mean, what is this about? And the same words continue, compassion, restoration. So whoever that's for, please receive it right now, okay? Because it doesn't have to be many words. Many times it's not that. It's the quality of the words rather than the quantity of it. So receive that. Well, if you're going to say compassion, the first two commandments of Jesus is to seek first the kingdom of God. Yes. It yes. says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your yes. soul, your strength, and your mind right. yes. and love your neighbor as yourself right. and he said these are the first and greatest commandments love God right. and love others mm -hmm. and then all these other things will be added unto you right. that's right. the secret yes. of God's kingdom blessings amen. chasing yes. you yes. and overtaking you amen. amen I was getting that you know I know we've prayed a lot uh, for people struggling with fear and anxiety uh, not able to sleep, insomnia. And I feel like we need to um, really hammer on that stronghold of fear because fear is emphasized in this nation all over the world, actually. People are so fearful of getting the first sign of a flu. They think they have COVID-19, and that's not so. And so we just want to take authority right now over that spirit of fear, yes. anxiety, in the name of Jesus, worry, uh, lack of sleep, oversleep, overeating, undereating, all of that has to, uh, is connected to fear. So, Father, we just thank you right now that you're freeing your children in the name of Jesus. And we do at Luke 10, 19. Remember that with COVID-19, the Lord has given us 
the authority over all the powers of the enemy. So we take authority over that spirit of fear and all the subordinate evil spirits along with it. So Father, I just thank you for liberty and freedom. Father, I just thank you. Father, you're surrounding your children with a shield of protection in the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, it says in Psalms 1830, he is a shield to all who trust in him. He is your shield. Trust him today. He's a shield about us, our glory and the lifter of our heads. Yes. He said he would give us angels charge over us. He would give angels charge over us right. to keep us in all of our ways. Yeah. We wouldn't even dash our foot against a stone. God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. That's right. He Amen. says, if you give yourself to me, right. if you hide yourself in my spirit right. and walk with me, no evil can befall you. Right. I mean, no plague will come nigh your That's dwelling right. place. That's right. God has given us these That's promises. Right. So right. quit right. fearing. Right. Fear right. not. The right. first thing Jesus or an angel would say is fear not. Right. Fear right. not. Apostle? What the fear say? opens the door yes, for the devil. Know, I was saying, Lord, because I felt because I, I was harassed. And I thought, oh, no, I don't have to tolerate this. You have not given mm -hmm. me a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. And uh, he reminded me of the scripture found in Psalms. 30, 20, you hide them in the secret place of your presence. Oh, that's good. Yes. So he's hiding you in the secret place of his presence. From the plots of men, you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion away from the strife of tongues. But you know, I felt that protection. There is a spirit of fear. Yes. Oh, let's take authority over the yes, spirit of fear. Yes, yes. God has not yeah. given you the spirit of fear, right. but of power and of love yeah. And of a sound that's right. mind. That's right. Second yes. Timothy one seven. Right. God yes. has not given you a spirit of fear, that's right. but of power and of love and of a sound that's mind. Right. I decree yes. over you that that spirit of fear yes. is bound. Yes. That attack of the enemy, these evil spirits that yes. come and try yes. to invade yes. your dreams yes. and try to come and put that kind of a haunting shadow over you yes. they are driven out god has not given it to you but he's given you power and love and a sound mind yes. Yes. stay on the word yes. Amen. keep your yes. mind yes. he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the word That's right. amen. amen so we amen. have authority over that spirit called fear now the fear of the lord is something completely different and so I just speak this over you. Now remember, COVID-19, I like to connect numbers. So in Proverbs 19, 23, the fear of the Lord leads to life. You're not going to die. He leads, the fear of the Lord leads to life. And he who has it abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. I love that. You know, God has given his angels charge over you That's right. to keep you in all your ways. Yeah. You can't even dash your foot against a stone. That's right. God wants you to understand that his love for you is insatiable. Right. He cannot show you enough. You know, I was seeing the other day that God's people are besieged with lies from the enemy telling them <laughs> that perfect. God has forsaken yes. them, that oh, yes. they've sinned and he's gone into hiding yes. and he's not going to be with them. The, the Bible says nothing can separate right. you from the love of God. Right. Right. Then it gives a whole list of things that can't separate you from God's love. He true. loves you so much he desperately. He wouldn't have sent his son, Jesus, our Lord, to die on the cross right. in your place if he didn't Amen. love you. And he loves you with all your faults. He loves you with yeah. these weaknesses. You have iniquities that your parents passed on to you. And Jesus actually, he, he was actually wounded for our transgressions, yes. right. our outward sins. Right. But he was also bruised, and a bruise is yes. deep down inside the flesh. He was bruised where blood flowed way down deep to take away the iniquities and the deep, sinful, driving passions that our parents passed on to us. Yes. You know, we all have something evil that our parents passed on to us, but Jesus also was bruised for yes. our iniquities, yes. Right. Yes. which are these deep, driving impulses that drive us to do things. That, and God loved you so much yes. that he not only died Amen. for your sins, his, his wounds were for your sins, 
but he was bruised for your iniquities right. and he wants you to know that that's because he wants you to walk with him right. in all your imperfections he only sees jesus right. Amen. what did job say the thing i feared greatly has yes. come upon me oh yes so okay. fear is an open door to it's the enemy false evidence appearing real f-e-a-r fear Ooh, I say that again false evidence appearing real <laughs> well we decree that fear has no place in your life in your house or those around you that you're gonna become like a an anointed fear dispelling agent of God right. uh, you're gonna go around and say I want to just pray for you <laughs> you know I was the Lord was sort of saying this to me this afternoon he said a lot of my children have trouble witnessing for me yes he said if you would ask anybody from a, a waitress mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. somebody that comes to service your you know your today I had a guy that came to service my air conditioner mm -hmm. and all I had to do was say do you have anything that I could pray for mm -hmm. and they open up open like door. a flower yes, yes. yes. Any, everybody wants to be yes. prayed for. They yes. want somebody to care for them. Yes. So if you don't feel like you're a good witness for Jesus, just say, is there anything I can pray for you? Yes. And you'll be amazed how that opens them up yes. and they want to tell you about all these things that are harassing yes. their life. Yes. That's Amen. right. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Apostle Gary. And also when you're talking about how much God loves us, just on your own time, read the whole chapter of Romans 8. But it starts, you know, towards, uh, I don't know if it's 28 or 38 verse, where I'm persuaded, yes. neither height or oh, death, right. uh, angels or demon that can separate his love with us. Just read the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. It will bless you. It will really bless you. The other thing I'm getting, Apostle, and this is um, across our land, really globally, there's major depression and grief and sorrow. I sense that this morning. And so uh, because of the families that they've uh, lost to COVID-19 and, and to flu, I mean, that's not COVID-19, but any kind of sickness or illness, there's, there's a, a spirit of heaviness that I'm sensing, not just in our nation, but around all the world. Well, you need to pray for that. You know, uh, fear is how the enemy rules us. Right. And God has not given us the spirit of fear. And God is, I was listening to the news the other day, they said many people, actually the multitudes are saying that they are having dreams. Oh yes. They oh, never yes. had dreams oh, yes. before, yes. and a lot of the dreams are haunting them. Yes. So we need, you know, I just felt oh. a moment ago that the Holy Spirit wanted us to drive out headaches yes. and dream yes. and those nightmares. Yes. Do you understand yes. that? Yes. Yeah, that's torment. Yes. So I, I take authority yes. over all these nightmares yes. and yes. dreams Lord. that the enemy yes. is sending your way. Yes. I Evil command things. that all fear be cast yes. down. Yes. Jesus yes. says that perfect love, which is God, right. perfect love oh. casts out all fear. Yes. So listen, you're going to have a fearless evening. Oh, you're right. going to start saying, I can't believe this. I feel such joy. Right. I feel so protected. The right. angels are given charge over Amen. me right. and fear has no place in my life. So mm -hmm. right now, God is yes. breaking that spirit of yes. fear and you're going to find me. yourself, even headaches yeah. are going to leave. I'm, well, I'm, I really, I got the Migraine. anointing on that. Yes. Headaches are yes. being yes. broken. Yes. Migraines are leaving you Amen. in Jesus' yes, in mighty Jesus name. name. Migraines and headaches, yes. I command you yes. to leave them yes. now in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Yes. And I yes. can see the angels of God pushing forth pushing back the forces of darkness uh, that has come to harass you in, in the night, in the night, mm -hmm. especially in the night where you're being terrorized. It's like a spirit of terror. And so we take authority over those spirits. Uh, it's connected to witchcraft, Apostle. So we take authority over witchcraft in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Yes. Father, we, we declare and decree the blood of Jesus over you. We cover you with the blood of Jesus over your mind, your ears, your heart, your sleep, your waking up, your prayer time. So, Father, we just bless you. We thank you for breakthrough even right now yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And, Lord, I just thank you, Father. I thank you for the Holy Spirit ministering to those who are mourning and grieving, Lord, for the loss of their loved ones, Father. 
And so, Father, I just thank you, Lord. This is where I have the heart of compassion this morning. I go, Lord, it's overwhelming to think about the whole world. I couldn't just pray over our nation. It's globally. So, Father, I just thank you, Father, for comfort of the Holy Spirit. I thank you that you're sustaining your people, your sons and daughters, through the nighttime, Father. I thank you you're carrying them, Lord, and that you're quieting your people with your love. Father, we bless you and we thank you for the ministry of your presence, your love, your Holy Spirit, your glory, Father. Lord, we decree as we close that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow with it. That God's blessing is chasing those that come to endeavor with us, to pray with us, to watch and be fed by the word of God. We just thank you, Lord, that the love of God is going to be shed in their hearts. There's a blessing that's going to chase them down. Lord, we decree blessing and protection and the blood of Jesus over their household. Lord, we're just so thankful that you have given us this ability to go on the Internet and to decree your blessing. The Bible says that when we decree a thing, it is established on those that we decree it over. So get ready. Something supernatural is going to chase you down. The blessing of the Lord is going to make you rich. He's going to encourage you. He's going to give you miracles. Listen, God's got angels right now. They've been given charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And they're going to cause blessing to come your way in Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next week.